Mustang. These vehicles are typical of what $15,000 would get you in 1987 when I was moving out of New York City and needed a car to survive. At that time you could purchase a fully loaded Ford Mustang GT for less than $15,000. After the initial three years when Mustang models all looked very similar and had a popular design, Ford had gotten away from their classic design that the original models were valued for. In 1987, to me, they did not look like what I thought of as a Mustang. The first Mustang rolled off the assembly line on March 9, 1964, with a list price of $2,368. Even though Mustang is a dream, its low price is a beautiful reality. Test drive one right now at your Ford dealers in Pleasant Dreams. One month later, Henry Ford II officially unveiled the Ford Mustang at the World's Fair in Flushing Meadows, New York. Out of the Ford Pavilion, there's a daydream corner called Mustang. The original Ford Mustangs were based on the Falcon's unified frame design. The Ford Mustang was the brainchild of Lee Iacocca, who would later become the president of the Ford Motor Company. He clashed with Henry Ford II and was fired. He would later be credited with Chrysler's 1980s revival. When Chrysler was on the verge of going out of business, he took $1.2 billion in federally guaranteed loans while he cut his salary to $1 a year. In 1987, across the country, Many Mustangs had been lying rusting and neglected in the 23 years following what was one of the largest automobile and product launches in history. After I was introduced to Larry Hall and he showed me what he could do for a 1966 Ford Mustang convertible for $15,000, I decided to proceed. And it just happened that on his lot there was the ideal candidate. On June 17, 1987, I deposited $5,000 with Hall's Body Shop, Inc. of Charlottesville, Virginia. Larry told me that for the same cost of a 1987 Mustang, I could have a 21-year-old street-drivable 1966 Ford Mustang convertible classic, which even then was not commonly seen driving around. There were so many early Mustangs produced by Ford that they were bound to be used, abused and left to rust away. So to preserve this classic, the whole car needed to be stripped down to be inspected for rust, which would normally be hidden from view. The rust was then cut out and replaced with fresh metal to give the base a strong foundation. While work was being done on the body, the engine and mechanics were being disassembled, inspected for wear and being replaced when necessary before being reassembled. As work advanced, I would visit the workshop on weekends to see and record the progress. There were delays for various reasons and as I could see at the time that leaded fuel was not going to be available much longer, I asked for replacement hardened valves and valve seats to be added to accommodate unleaded fuel. This added an extra $1,500 and more time. Then it was suggested that as there were only a few original air conditioning units left and they could get one for me, I should consider adding one as this would add more value to the car. It does look quite good and fills in the floor between the front seats. That was another $1,500 and extra time. Unfortunately, I didn't have anything in writing. All I had was Larry's word that in three months he was to provide a 1966 Ford Mustang convertible with a rebuilt 289 cubic inch V8 engine and all mechanical parts where necessary. The interior was replaced with deluxe pony door panels and pony seat upholstery which featured pony logo inserts and die cast chrome plated seat buttons. 
The convertible top was replaced with parchment coloured canvas and the body was restored to a better than original condition in a vintage burgundy colour. As time went on, I was handed detailed invoiced expenses for vehicle, parts and labour for an amount double the original amount we had agreed upon before the addition of the unleaded fuel conversion and the air conditioner. Finally, on the 9th of April 1988, now, after 10 months of time and cost overruns, Larry handed over my car. As he put it, after receiving the satisfaction of being involved in and watching this classic being returned to its former glory, he was willing to meet me halfway, and we settled for $21,500. Even after 33 years, it's the only car I've ever purchased that hasn't depreciated. Thank you, Larry Hall, from Hall's Auto Body at 1949 Northside Drive, Charlottesville, in Virginia. Soon after taking ownership of my newly restored classic, I entered it in the 1988 Academy Ford 9th Annual Mustang Show. It took out first place in the original condition category. As for the Brumby license plate, this refers to a wild Australian horse. From the very start, the Mustang has been a part of our lives. When we were married, we had to have our wedding photos taken with the Mustang. Since the restoration, I have added a few upgrades. I had disc brakes put on the front. I added power steering and a retro radio with built-in Bluetooth wireless connectivity so I can make hands-free telephone calls through the audio system and also stream music from my smartphone or from the two USB inputs, as well as listen to local radio stations. The Mustang has been a great source of joy and entertainment, not only by being able to appreciate the classic look from a time past while driving around, the Mustang has also been the subject of countless conversations with strangers I've met along the roads. Numerous people have driven up beside me at traffic lights and asked what year the car is, and some even jokingly offer to swap their expensive modern sports cars for the Mustang. As technology is making advances and there are more conveniences for modern vehicles, I hope that future generations can keep maintaining these beautiful works of art. <laughs>